In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can calculate how long it'll take to pay off a credit card balance at a given monthly payment amount and an interest rate. And I'm also gonna show you how we can create a sensitivity analysis to determine how long it'll take based on different interest rates and diff different monthly payment amounts. So to start, I'm gonna use a balance of $5,000. Say that's a credit card balance. And the monthly payment will be $100. And let's say for the interest rate, it's gonna be 13%. So I'm setting it up this way just because I'm gonna create a table later on to, for the sensitivity analysis. And so once we've got these values, we can use a function in Excel called n per number of periods. And it's gonna calculate how many periods it'll take for that balance to be paid off. So for the rate, I'm gonna take the interest rate and I'm gonna divide it by 12 because we're making payments monthly, interest is gonna accrue monthly, so I'm gonna divide it by 12. And the payment amount is gonna be this $100. The present value is what we owe today, so that's gonna be a negative $5,000. So it's important to set that to negative because if we've got a positive amount here and a positive amount here, then they're gonna add add on to the balance as opposed to reducing that balance, the payments. So it's important to make sure one's positive and the other's, other's negative. The future value is gonna be set to zero because obviously I wanna calculate the number of periods for, the, for that future value to get down to zero for that balance to be paid off. For the type, the default is, is set to the end of the period. So this can determine whether you're making payments at the end of the month or at the beginning of the month. So it could have a minor um, impact over the long term. I'm gonna leave it as a default to say end of the period and close this off. So 72.4 periods. So if I change this last argument to say, okay, the beginning of the period, you know, 71. So not a huge difference, even over a, a fairly long stretch. So um, that's why I'm not gonna focus too much on that. So if we wanted to convert this into years, let's divide this by 12 to say, okay, it'll take about just over six years to pay off the debt at a 13% interest rate and a monthly payment of $100. But let, let's convert this into an actual date so it's a bit more meaningful. So I'm gonna get rid of the divided by 12 here and I'm just gonna use that periods, 72 periods. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it within the Excel's end of month function. So EO month, I'm just gonna show you how it works. So what it does is it calculates the end date based on, on the month. Might seem like an odd function to use in this case, but I like it because it's really easy to add months to it. So for example, I can take take today's date. So, so I'm doing this in May, 2024. And so if I set this value, value to zero, it's gonna give me the end date of the current month, which is May, 2020, uh, 2024. So if I change the short date, May, 2024, right? If I change this to one, it's gonna jump ahead and say the end of next month, June 30th. So that's, that's the intention. I'm gonna use that end of month function and I'm gonna use today as my starting point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy what I've done there and put it in place of that one. And so now I'm gonna calculate the number of months and it's going to tell me that May of 2030, because roughly six years, do this in 2024, so 23, so six years is when that debt would be paid off. So I can use that to create the rest of my my calculations here. What I'm also gonna do is format this a bit differently. So right click, format cells. And I'm just gonna put it in a custom format. So I got three letters for the month and, and I put three Ys for the year. And so that'll give me the full, um, full year. So now what I'm gonna do is copy this in its entirety back here, just so I don't, just so I've got those references rather than copying them over. And so it's it hasn't copied my formatting, so I can click on this, hit the Format Painter, and apply that same formatting. So now I've got that in here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this so that I can see what, um, what those end dates would look like based on different interest rates. So I'll take this interest rate and add 0 0.01, so it jumps to 14%, and I'll copy this down. So let's say, let's go all the way down to 25%. So I've got that, and let's say I also wanna go across and say, what, what if the monthly payment was $150, or $200, or $250, right, to see that incremental change. 
So I'm going to copy this 5,000 and soon the balance stays the same. Because rather than going in and one by one making these changes, we can create this, this table so we can do this analysis and it's a lot easier to say, okay, how quickly would I be able to pay off this debt if I switch to a car that maybe has this much interest rate and I made this much in payments, right? So it makes it easier to run through all those different scenarios without having to go through one by one. So the key thing I need to do at this point before I start copying anything over it is freezing my, my cells because I don't want to copy this over. My references are going to be thrown off if they are. So if I look at, at cell B6, that is this interest rate. So I need to hold B frozen. So I need to freeze that first one. So I put the dollar sign before the B. That's going to keep that intact. For C3, that's my monthly payment. I want to keep the row intact. So row three. So I'm going to put the dollar sign in front of the three. In the case of the balance, same thing. We're going to put the dollar sign in front of the two. So now that I've done that, should be able to copy this down. And now the one problem you'll notice here, um, I'm getting an error here just because what this is telling me that at a 24% interest rate, I can't possibly be paying down just $100 because it'll never get paid off. So that's what that means. So that error um, means I can't really do that. So I'm going to delete that just because as you can see, 2038, so that is 14 years from now to pay off $5,000. So that's barely covering the, the interest payments. So if you get an error like that, that just tells you that you know it's not going to get paid off based on what you've input. So I'm gonna copy these across now, do the same thing. It shouldn't run into hopefully any issues with the other ones here. Yeah, the other ones are fine. So as you can see, we've got our different um, payment, payment, payment end dates, balance end dates based on these, on these different metrics. So we, you can see that, you know, at the 13% interest rate, you know, if we bumped up our monthly payment amount by $50, we can have it paid off in 2027, if we bump it up to $200, 2026, if we bump it up to $250, then we're looking at 2020, March 2026 as, as the end date. So in some cases, you know, you, you see that there's not sometimes a big difference in the interest rate, whether, you, whether you're jumping from 13 to 14% may not be a significant difference, but if you're jumping from 13% to 19%, you that could add a few more months. So obviously it's gonna depend on the size of your debt and um, how, how big your monthly payment is. But the biggest impact is definitely um, increasing that monthly payment. For example, at a 23% interest rate, you know, on a $5,000 balance, if you're only paying $100, you know, you're looking at 14 years. But if you just increase that payment by $50, that could shave off a whole 10 years off that payment. If you if you increase it to $200, you're looking at an additional year there. And if you increase it by another $50, then you're paying off by, by 2026. Now, in this case, um, this one looks a bit extreme just because in this case, you're likely barely covering the interest payments. So in other situations, you know, it's not going to be as drastic. Like at the 18% here, we've got a four-year difference, right? So it's not, not always going to be that level of extreme, but it does give you a bit more context as to, you know, how much of an impact, you know, making it, making an increase to your payments um, will have on that debt. So obviously if you can't afford to increase it by $50, maybe if you increase this by, by $10 or $20, whatever the case may be, it can, it can allow you to set up that sensitivity analysis, however it works for you. And obviously you can expand these formulas to, to go further across to factor in, um, more variations such as let's say $300, right? In this case, again, because we've frozen our cells properly, we can just copy this and we can see the effect of, of that. So this is how we can set this up. The key to making this work really is just that n per function, which allows us to calculate the number of periods that'll take to pay off the debt and putting that within the end of month calculation and, and setting today as our starting point, we can see exactly how long it may take, assuming that interest rate um, and assuming that monthly payment amount, how long it'll take to pay it off. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.